Hey, welcome everybody to our uh, backyard uh, church in the neighborhood. Uh, it's Lake Ridge Community Church coming to you from little screens across our city. So welcome. Uh, we are going to start in just a few minutes. And uh, so we're just going to play play a bit of music and welcome you and everybody else who, who is joining us. So welcome. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Son, it tells how you're faithful, it speaks of your mercies anew. The prairie sky, it 
tells of your vastness, it speaks of your goodness and truth. In our attempts to praise you, Lord, be pleased with our thank offering. In all we do, in all we speak, be praised, Lord, in all that we bring. This is our song, this is our heart, to praise you, Lord, to be a part of the great choir. Shelter, they speak of your tender embrace. In our attempts to praise you, Lord, be pleased with our thank offering. In all we do, in all we speak, be praised, Lord, in all that we bring. This is our song, this is our heart to praise you, Lord. Welcome to uh, our backyard, uh, our backyard worship services together, and we are here at Carrie and Michelle's back backyard. Uh, they have amazing internet. I just have a very bad uh, luck with like computer things, so um, hoping that some of Carrie and Michelle's internet love will uh, will will work out here, and we'll be able to, to have, have this time together. Hey, I uh, just want to welcome everybody. We have some people in the yard here. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, uh, and there's other people meeting in different parts of town and people joining on online here and so welcome. God is good and God is always faithful and he loves us. And even in the midst of a pandemic, we are people who are safe in his hands and so welcome. I'm just gonna pray and uh, then I wanna talk about a few things. So let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the sun shining. Thank you for the, the world that continues on. That the world was made, and you said this world was made good. And we believe that. And we are part of your work in redeeming and healing and making this place whole. Thank you that we get this chance to live. Thank you that we get the chance to be a part of your story today in 2020. That you chose us to be a part of what is going on here. Help us to be attentive to you. Help us to be faithful to you. Um, help us to know how much you love us. And may we never forget that together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, a couple odd things. One, I don't have any hair. This was uh, a funny thing. Uh, my wife and daughters and sister and mother, they've been convinced for a while I should shave my head. But I said I'm not going to do it until I grow a beard just to offset things. So, uh, so, so far during the pandemic, I've had a mustache. I've had no beard. Now I've done the bald thing. So I'm just kind of going through the entire cycle of, of awesomeness. And so now I'm in the bald phase and it's, and it's fun, but it's 2020, right? We, we can, we can, you can, you can kind of do what you want in 2020 and people go, oh, it's just 2020. Hey, uh, also I am wearing, look at these. I'm wearing, I don't know how far back I got to go to kind of see, see these, but I'm wearing hip waders. Why am I wearing hip waders? Well, I want to talk to kids for a second and talk to you about these things. I don't know if, if any of the kids watching right now know what these are, but these allow you to go deep into water. You can go up to this far. If you go this far, you'll fill your boots. But right here, you can go this deep. And I remember once my uncle, he took me out fly fishing and it was a lot of fun. We spent the whole day fly fishing and I tried to catch fish and we'd catch them and we'd let them go again. It was so much fun. I remember as I would stand in the water as a kid, or uh, I would, I could feel the push of the of the river, and you kind of had to like stand with and brace yourself a little bit, right? Because the water's really come coming at you. And the deeper that I go, the more the water would would want to take me downstream. T 
take me some somewhere. Well, this upcoming Sunday, next Sunday, we are going to have a baptism. And baptisms are something that Jesus said. Jesus said, go and baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so uh, Jesus was baptized, and, uh, and all the people who followed Jesus, they were baptized too. And the story of baptism is that we go and we go into the water. Uh, it, we, we actually dunk people right under the water. It isn't just going in half deep, it's going in all the way. And it's really a way for us to talk about how we are joining with God in what God's doing and saying, I want to be a part of joining with God. And so what an interesting picture that Jesus says, the way to do this, the way to say you are joining with God is to get underwater, is to dunk yourself, to leave, to leave part of your old life there and to pick up the new life in Jesus. And so next Sunday, we're going to have uh, about five people who are going to be baptized. They've, they've stepped forward and they said, we want to go under the water and we want to be a part of the way and the life of Jesus. And so it's exciting. I'm not going to be wearing hip hip waders. One of the fun things about being a pastor is I get to go in too. And uh, luckily we do this in August because if it was in January, it would be much colder. But if we do it in August, it's going to be beautiful. So we're going to do that at Camp Chestermere. Uh, Tara's going to come in just uh, a second here and tell us all about all the things happening. But that's just one that I wanted to talk to you about and talk to the kids about, about stepping into the water and becoming part of what God is doing. It's like stepping into a wonderful, fresh river of life. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit during the message this this morning. But Tara, come and tell us a few things that are happening. And I'm going to change out of these hip, oh, hip, cool. hip waiters. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Tara. And I have a couple of announcements for us. The first thing is, if you're online um, watching on Facebook, can you please share the live since we had to stop and start? It would be great so people could find us again. And also, if you're in the comments, say hi, because that's really fun for us to be able to engage that way. And if you're in neighborhoods, tag, tag us. Take some photos and tag us so we can see where you're at and who you're watching with. Um, Preston mentioned this, but next Sunday, Sunday, August 16th, um, at 10.30 a.m., we're going to do a service at Camp Chestermere. So the details are super important because we're going to follow all the guidelines. We're going to be outside, down by the water. You're going to be spaced out. So you need to remember a couple things, like um, you have to sign up. So you can go to lakeridgecommunity.com slash church outside and sign up your whole household, whoever's coming. Um, there's going to be some kids activities for kids three and above. The camp has graciously offered to do that for us. So um, we're going to also have to have a check-in area. So when you arrive, you're going to park and then there's going to be a little check-in spot. And when you're there, you can kind of just confirm with us if your kids are going to go to that or if they're not. And then we'll send you down to the lake to find your spot. So those are kind of the main things. Um, and then we're also doing a baptism. So it'll be really, really fun and celebratory to be together. And you need to sign up before um, Friday morning. So that's when the cutoff kind of is. So we can actually figure out our numbers. And if the weather's bad, we have a plan for that too. So we'll share more information as that's coming. So again, sign up this week, lakeridgecommunity.com slash church outside. Uh, the other things that are happening are just, um, I was going to let you know if you are looking for ways to stay in touch, our newsletter is a great way. It usually comes out about once a month, and you can sign up for that um, out on our website, lakeridgecommunity.com. And you can also follow us online. Uh, you're watching on Facebook, but you can follow us on Instagram as well. And then the last couple things are care is available. If you are needing care, if you need to reach out, or if you need some support or prayers or practical needs, um, then you can reach out to Preston or Evan. There's uh, a spot on our website that actually has links to counselors as well as the spiritual director and then um, care for our pastors or care that you can uh, approach with our pastors. So it's lakeridgecommunity.com slash care. And then the last thing I was just going to mention is we're so, so grateful for your continued gifts and support. It allows us to care for our community and our city and our world, actually, because we even have ministries in Haiti that we care for. So if you're wondering how you can support, you can head to our website and it has all the information for e-transfers, which is the email is giving at lakeridgecommunity.com. And you can also give directly from our website through Canada Help. So there's a sweet form there that you can use. You can give monthly or um, one-time gifts through that way. So it's lakeridgecommunity.com slash give. And the last thing is just a reminder that there's no Zoom call this week again. So thanks for missing you guys. I hope to see you soon. Here's Preston. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, this morning we are going to take a look at, uh, at, this, at the prophet Amos. Who is recently, I'm sure you just woke up this this morning and read the prophet Amos, right? It, see, it seems like like maybe an odd thing to, to, to step into this morning. Uh, but we are on a journey uh, on, a, uh, on a sermon series called Who We Became. And we're talking about kind of the journey of 
maturing in Jesus and what that looks like. And so we, we've talked about the idea of rings on a tree, that, that every year there's a new ring, something that is growing on the tree and that we can look back through our story and take a look at the times when there's a really good year and there was a lot of growth. And maybe there was other times when there, when there wasn't such a, a, a great year. Uh, we can look back and celebrate things. I sometimes like to look back through all my old photos. And we were doing that the other day and looking at my, my girls, the, the year that each of them were, were born. And you just can't help but look, look at those stories and uh, just, 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 just be warmed by it, right? Um, and I just learned Michelle, she, she biked across Canada once. So she was like looking back and looking at the rings on the tree and there's like, that must be like this thick, awesome ring that you look back to and go, I did something, right? I did something really, really neat, neat, neat there. Sorry, I, I, I probably should have asked for per, per, permission, but now now everybody's gonna be calling you and saying, Michelle, come, let's, let's, let's do it again, right? It's 2020, anything can happen, right? Everybody has some amazing parts of their story. We also have painful parts of our story and we look back and we don't know maybe who we were at that point. But it's helpful to look over these because when we enter into wherever we are now, whether things are going well or things are not going well, we can take a look and, and say, God, has God been faithful to me in the past? And how do I step into what God is doing now so I can care, care, carry on? And you know what? A tree can withstand a tough year. Although the ring might be really burnt and scorched from a particular year, the tree grows. It continues to. That's how they were designed for it. And so I believe that no matter what people are going through here in Chestermere, Lake Ridge, and my own family, I believe that it's, a, that it's a moment in time and that God continues to put into us his spirit and his life so that we can live another day. Hey, this morning we are taking a look at the story of Amos because it's this really interesting story. Uh, he is one of about a dozen minor prophets. And these minor prophets were these people who God kind of rose up at a time to say something into the culture of that time. And uh, and there was actually kind of a few people who, who felt like they were called to be prophets. Except for this one guy, Amos. He was a shepherd. His job was to just take care of sheep. And one day, while he's out taking care of his sheep, God said to him, I need you to go and say something to the king in the north. Now, I don't know how you'd feel about that if you were just working with some sheep, and next thing you know, you're being called to talk to a king. And this wasn't just any king. This was a king named Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was a, was a prosperous king. He had a lot of money. He had a lot of wealth. He had taken over a lot of his enemies around him. And usually you would think that when somebody's doing that, God's hand of peace and goodness is on them. They're seeing some success, not Jeroboam. Everything that he did and accumulated was done not in God's way, but it was done by his own power, by his own strength, and by, some, by, and by a lot of wickedness, actually. It says in some other parts outside of Amos, it says that Jeroboam went and he set up these places of worship, but not to God but to other gods, to idols. We're going to take a look at, at, at how that plays in, but it sets things up. Jeroboam, not a good guy. In fact, some people think that he was among the worst. And he set things up and he turned everybody's hearts away from God and away and over to these, to these other idols. Why do you think it is so... This comes up throughout the Bible. You read it over and over again, saying, don't worship these idols, worship God. And some people might think that, that it's saying, like, don't join that religion, join this religion. This is a better religion, that's a bad religion. But actually, there's something far more interesting happening throughout the Bible when people are worshiping other gods. What, what's happening is when you would worship a different god, you would take on, you would literally adopt the values of that god. And so there's a place that I went to when I was in, in Israel. I've been there a few times and it's a fantastic, really fascinating place. They dug up in a place called Megiddo, one of the high places. These are places that are kind of set up high where they would do, um, where they would worship uh, gods. And this one place, it, picture a big oval platform, probably the size of a garage. And on this big oval platform, they would worship their God by doing things that, this, that these gods valued. Baal, Ashtoreth, and some others. And they would do terrible things. They would kill babies on top of there. They would, they would have illicit sex with, 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 uh, with, with slaves. They would treat people very poorly. People would die. It was a place of blood. It was a place of terror. It was awful. And I don't think that our kind of Western imagination can maybe imagine 
how awful this experience would be to see it. When you worshipped one of these gods, you had to do what these gods valued. They were sex, they were war, they were fertility, they were all these things that demeaned people, that took God's good creation and shredded it, that took people and said that they were valueless, took the poor and demeaned them, sold them into slavery and used them until they were dead. This is the culture that the shepherd, Amos, is called into and he's about to step in. Now you wonder what the rings on this guy's tree look like, right? He's going along, he's like, I'm probably gonna have a nice life as a shepherd. And then suddenly I'm about to have a very interesting and hard life going up and talking to Jeroboam and saying, you're wrong. This is not right. The way you're telling people to worship those gods means that you're destroying people's lives. And this God will have none of it. God deeply cares about people. So if you read the book of, of, of Amos, it is, it is feisty because it's first, what. Amos does is he takes task to all the surrounding nations. He says, all these other people, they're worshiping these gods and look at what they are doing. They're killing here. They're destroying here. They're taking slaves here. They're treating the poor awful here. And Jeroboam would have listened to that and said, you're right. All of our enemies around us, they're terrible. And then he says, and you are the worst. You are doing it the worst of all. And he lays into him. And you can imagine Jeroboam is probably listening to, 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 to this guy. And I wonder if he's sharpening his, his, his knife, right? To say, yeah, and I'm about to take you out too. But he goes on. Amos is fearless in this, in this message. And it reveals something about how we grow. How God is interested in each of us growing. So we're going to take a look at the book of, of, of Amos. It's nine chapters long. If you want to read it yourself, take it slow, take it easy. There's some, there's some crazy stuff in there, um, but, uh, but, but, it, but it makes for some really interesting reading. One thing that Amos does in chapter three is he says this to, to, to the people. He says, uh, he says, you only I have chosen from all the families of the world. He reminds, Amos reminds the king and says, God made a promise. That through you, through our people, the whole world is to be blessed. Not to be used up, not to be hurt, not to be damaged, but through you, the whole world is to be blessed. This, it is our family that's supposed to be doing this good thing in the world. And you're not. And you're not. So he reminds them of something from the past. A great historical truth that is true about him and his people. I wonder if that's maybe one of the starting places for when we mature in our faith, is to be reminded of something that's, that's so visceral, so deep to who we are. Maybe it's that God loves you. Maybe it's that God will never leave you. Maybe, maybe God, like, like when I was young, I, I, I read Isaiah 43. It says that God says I'm precious in his sight. And I go back, that is like my touchstone verse. That when I don't know or feel very precious or loved, I can go back and I can say, I'm precious in God's sight. And it kind of like grounds me and says, I'm ready to take the step forward. And this is what Amos does. He says, our family, the people of Israel, we were chosen to do something good in the 